All right, so now I've already done um, a video on bearing inspection, but I wanted to also do a video on shaft inspection. Now, when I say shaft inspection, that I'm mainly gonna be covering the shaft because that's what we do a lot of here. But this, this area, we might also talk a little bit about inspecting of uh, uh, in, inner gearboxes, pillow blocks. Let's go ahead and just jump into the shaft inspection area and I'll try to finish the video maybe talking a little bit more about pillow blocks, looking at some of those inner um, bearing mount surfaces. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into it and let's kind of start talking about our shafts. All right, so this is, this is one that we would typically, you will be using in our bearing installation labs. This is shaft number three. Some of the stuff that um, this one kind of covers, or this one kind of has everything that you're gonna see. You're gonna have flat spaces, you're gonna have threaded spots, you're gonna have internal bores, you're gonna have tapers going into those internal bores or even a taper going onto an external shaft. So you wanna kind of inspect all of those. One thing that we're gonna be looking for on all the flat surfaces is just any type of gouging, any type of wear, any type of indication that maybe that bearing has spun on the shaft and created some galling or something to damage it. Now, I have a lot of shafts in here that are damaged because of misinstallation or mis uh, removal of bearings. So I wanna go ahead and show those to you really quick. So this shaft has actually come in contact with our bearing puller, our bearing splitter. And I'm gonna show you, you can see that it's actually got a pretty good digger right there. And on the other side, it's even worse. Okay, so what has happened is they've over tightened that bearing remover and they've actually caused it to dig into the shaft. Also, you can see that there's a lot of gouging all the way up this shaft. So there could have been that sh more than likely the bearing was when it was pulled off, it was being pulled off cockeyed or when it was being installed, it got installed kind of cockeyed. Okay, so we want to be very careful that when we're installing or removing something that we're, you know, taking the proper steps not to damage that. Ultimately, do not be this guy. We, we go through a lot of shafts here and it's because of this. A bearing splitter should not be pulled down very tight. It should not even be making serious contact with that um, shaft. Um, this is just a good thing to learn how to do because you will be removing bearings out in the field and you don't want to damage them. You don't want to be the reason that they have to replace those because yeah, there's nothing worse than going and telling your boss that you damaged something and now you need to get it replaced and it's your fault. So while we're on the subject of inspecting some of those flat surfaces, I wanted you to take a look at this one. So you can see I, there's a bunch of little dings and dents all throughout this shaft. Let me kind of spin it so you can see it. So what's happened is either um, probably through installation, people have just beat the crap out of this thing. Um, if, if you start seeing a lot of this, I would go ahead and be looking at getting that shaft repaired. Most of the problems that we have in here, like I said, are from misinstallation. Um, just don't be that guy, especially not out in the field. You don't want to have to explain to your boss while, why something is wrecked. Next, we're going to want to make sure we check out our threads. So if, like on this particular shaft, we have a nut that spins on there, what I would do is I would take that nut, spin it all the way on there, make sure that none of those threads have been damaged. Again, be very careful when you're handling this stuff because a lot of times these threads get damaged when you're removing or installing or moving around the part, it just gets dropped and it gets dinged. And then you have to spend the time to dress up those, those surfaces. Those internal chamfers or external chamfers, you wanna make sure you take a look at those. The reason being is if a chamfer is messed up, it could cause some problems when you're installing your bearing. Those things are made so that it kind of, you put your bearing on and it kind of slips up over them. If they're not perfect or if they're a little bit cockeyed or if they've been dropped and it has a nice dent in it, that could create some problems with um, when you're installing those bearings, it causes it to want to gouge up that shaft. So take, take some time, look over all that stuff. If it doesn't have a chamfer and you think you can, and you want to get one put on it, go ahead and do that if you know your company is okay with that. Now, I wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about shafts that have become bent or warped, okay? So typically if a shaft has to go a long distance, sometimes it will get bent. Um, it's not something you typically see a lot of, but it is a good idea to watch for it and just kind of take a look for it. One thing that you can do is you could take a straight edge and just compare the straight edge to a specific flat surface. This one is the longest shaft that I have. The problem with this shaft is that there's so many rises and there's drops and stuff like that. It's kind of hard to tell, but we do have a pretty good surface from here to here that I can show you on. 
We have a precision straight edge that we use. It's got a nice little um, plastic cover, so you want to remove that. This, uh, this straight edge has been ground within, I believe, 10, 5 to 10 thou. I think, I think it's 5. So what you would do is you would, you would put it onto the surface that you want to inspect, and you would compare to see if there's any dips or rises. So what I can do with this one, because there's so many, so many little steps, is I can go over here, I can look at it, and I can see if there is any tapers. This is really good for you know, indicating whether or not maybe uh, a surface is kind of tapering towards the, um, tapering away or tapering to it. Make sure that if you, you're looking at something and you see a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of a bow in it, take a straight edge and just go ahead and compare it. These are also great if you want to inspect dents or things like that. Um, to get yourself a precision straight edge, they're worth the money. The last and final thing that I wanna talk about is just shaft um, roundness. So typically, you, if you have a shaft, it's probably gonna be round. But if you did wanna inspect it, maybe you looked at it, something's up with it, it's possibly bent, something like that, you know, you would kinda, you wanna look it over for roundness. And the way we're gonna do that is with a set of calipers. Okay, so I got my, my shaft and we're kinda, we wanted to look at it head first that way, because we are looking for roundness. We're looking for this surface to be round all the way down the shaft. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take multiple measurements all the way down the shaft in multiple planes, so some here, some here, some here. That way we can, we can measure and then we can compare our measurements to each other. So a measurement taken from here and a measurement taken from over here should be identical. If they're not identical, then there's probably something wrong um, with the roundness of that shaft. So the, the planes that we will be using, we're gonna be using four different planes. We're gonna start with one here. Typically, this would be the A plane. So we're gonna measure from here to here will be A. Then we're gonna spin about uh, 10 to 20 degrees. And then we're gonna have our B plane. We're gonna spin again, C plane. And then we should be our D plane, which should be from here down to here. It doesn't so much matter where those planes are going around this shaft, as long as they're all in different locations. So if you're, instead of doing your A plane here, if you're more like this, because maybe something, there's an obstruction in the way, like this table that we have all of our bearings mounted on could become an instruct, obstruction to you. So you're just gonna try to take four different planes that you can get to, okay? Now, the next thing is we're gonna do three different measurements in each one of those planes. So if we were gonna take a, a measurement of our A plane, we would measure right here at the end, and we would, see, we would record that, then we would move to our second measurement, which should be somewhere in the middle of our shaft, or of our, our surface that we're gonna be measuring, because this surface is different than this surface. So we don't wanna take you know, two on this surface and one on this one, because these are totally different measurements. We wanna, we wanna compare just right here. So we're gonna take our second measurement, and then we're gonna move, and we're gonna do our last measurement on the back side of that surface. And then we're gonna to move to our next plane. So then we're gonna to go to our B plane, and we're gonna do one measurement here, one measurement here, and then one right here. And we're gonna to move to our C, and then we're gonna do one here. Oops, let me get on that a little better. Like I said, sometimes you get some instructions, so maybe I'd have to flip it over here. And we got one measurement here, one in the center, and then one on the end, all right? So we're gonna just take it and we're gonna do this on every surface that we work with um, to make sure that our shafts are nice and, nice and round. So on to the subject of pillow blocks or gear boxes, let's call it. This one, I've kinda got, these two are the only two that I really have that I can pull apart very easily and show you guys. Um, and this one is a little bit closer to how a gearbox is and this one's just your typical pillow block. So like I said, with some of the stuff with pillow blocks, you wanna make sure that they, they're not mounted loosely. You wanna make sure that there's no denting, there's no heat discoloration. If that bearing was inside there causing heat problems and it discolored the paint, you might, uh, you might replace that whole pillow block. Also, if that bearing has been spinning around, you're gonna notice that some of those internal surfaces have become worn. This one's really easy, I'm, and I've already pulled the bolts off just for uh, cinematography's sake here you can see that a bearing sits on here. And then this is just an oil passage right here so that they can, you can oil it. So now you can see how right now it's nice and smooth and it's cleanly machined. What would happen if a, if a bearing was sitting there constantly spinning on it, this would become pretty galled up. Also the bearing would not sit in there nice and tight. So you wanna make sure you inspect in here, you wanna make sure you're really looking inside here for that kind of stuff. 
Again, if you're working with a pillow block like this, you wanna make sure that one, this pillow block does not get spun wrong, okay? The bolts, on our particular one, the bolts will not even go in nicely if you have this thing on backwards. So make sure you take the time and put the things back together the correct way. Some people might take and actually stamp with a, uh, a center punch indicating which side is front, which side is back, okay? But just make sure you do that. Like I said, if, if any of this paint has become discolored, you want to, at that point, either to determine whether or not it needs to be replaced or if it's still in good working order, that's something you might want to talk to your manager about. Um, but typically these are all cast iron. Um, they're pretty, pretty, uh, pretty indestructible, but you know, talk with your manager and let, you know, let him decide. Also, you want to make sure that you look at any of these inside areas for just cracking or leaking. So, and I, you can't really look for leaking when you've already got it apart, but you definitely want to look for cracking. If you have been having a problem where there's oil around your pillow block, you would maybe take a look at it and determine if it was cracked and if leaks were forming because of those cracks. Um, more than likely, it would have been because some sort of outside force had hit this and caused those. So you want to make sure that you're looking in for any dents or anything on these outside surfaces. If um, they get hit all the time, you just want to make sure that you're, you're really looking them over. Lastly, you want to look at the seals. More than likely, when you rebuild them, you're going to replace those seals. But if your seals have become corroded or cracked or something like that and they're not holding in the oil or grease, you want to get that thing rebuilt. Um, this could just create long-term long problems, so you just want to make sure you're looking into that. Um, more than likely on a pillow block, it will be a sealed bearing, um, so just make sure that the, that seal is in place. So that's all I have for you guys on shaft and um, box inspection, we'll call it. That We will get further into the inspection side of those boxes when we get into the gear section or the pump section or something like that, but this is a good kind of taster or teaser, all right? So go ahead and get started. I hope this, guy, this helps you guys um, do a little bit of inspection, maybe a little bit of troubleshooting.